interrupt everybody's plans. I'm gonna come over here. Is that alright with you guys? Yeah. Okay, because I get really sniffed when I get behind the podium. I have to be honest, I give the worst speeches when I'm behind the podium. So how many people introduced me here? Awesome. Okay, I'm here with Mr. Uh, you know, like sometimes when you have like a script, you have to stick to the script, you're not as good as when you freelance. I'm better freelancing, so hope you guys don't mind. Uh, my name is Mayor Tom. I've been mayor now for 10 years. We started a program called Pollen five years ago, and I imagine most of you have heard about it now, right? Uh, how many, that was my, I'm not even going to ask how many have not heard of it. Let's just assume most of you have. The thing I like about Fish and Gold is, first off, this is my first college town speech this year. I do this every year. I go to every high school, including Whiting, because there's a lot of Whiting students uh, that participate in college bound. Um, and I get made pretty much the same speech, except for when I go to Fish and Gold, because a lot of my speeches, let's say, if I'm talking to another high school, Part of my speech is usually about the importance of college and how important college is and how you have to make that decision. When I come to Bishop Ball, I don't have to talk about that. Because I know that most of you, 90% of you, if not higher, are going to graduate from Bishop Ball and you're going to go on to college. So the nice thing about this speech is I can just forget about that whole part because we all understand the importance of going to college, right? Yeah. You wouldn't be going to Bishop Ball if you didn't understand the importance of going to college. Yeah. We all take that for granted. So, let's go quickly through the basics of our program, and we're just going to talk. Because I want you to understand why we did this. We're all ham students, right? Appreciate that. Okay, first off, I want to introduce a couple people. I'd like to introduce Leanne Munoz, who is the College Bound Coordinator. Let's give a big round of applause. And then we have Leanne as a College Bound student. And then we ended up hiring her after, gradu after she graduated from college. I'd like to also introduce Tom Daverton. He helped me create the College Bound program. You know, it's, it's easy as a mayor, you get these great ideas, and I got a great idea from Kevin Smith, who's a great guy, the Hammond guy. He called me up on Thanksgiving one year. He says, Mayor, I just heard the craziest thing on NPR, and I'm thinking, on Thanksgiving, you're listening to NPR. What's the matter with you, right? But anyway, we'll go on. Uh, Kevin says, there's this program in Kalamazoo, Michigan called the Kalamazoo Promise. It's a big block of money was given to Kalamazoo. And from that money, they said, what you need to do with this money, Kalamazoo? Tom, how much was that? Like 250 million, 300 million. You're gonna have some finance majors in here. Think about what you could do with $250 million. You could literally place it in a bank and do nothing with it and make, let's say you're making 3%. You put 3% of 250 million. It's a lot. It's safe to say it's a lot. Is that, is that 7 point? No. Is that 75 million? No, I can't do that. 7 point 5 million? Over 6 million. 6 million dollars. Without doing anything. By the way, how much does it cost? Thank you, by the way. Math major, right? Good, I like it. Thank you. 7 million dollars. 6 million dollars. You know what you can do with that program? It costs us 3 million dollars to run the College Bound program right now. So interest alone, on that gift that they got, they could run a college program and send almost every kid that goes to Kalamazoo Public School to college and pay for their tuition. And they don't have to do anything with the money. They could leave it sit in the bank account for eternity. It's pretty awesome, right? Well, then we gave City Hammond $250 million. That's bad news. I wish that happened. That'd be great. But it didn't. So how can we replicate what they did with the Kalamazoo Promise here in Hammond? Well, what we decided to do was earmark a part of our gaming revenues. Uh, or shoot casino. I'm going to tell you guys right now, the reason we get millions of dollars in gaming revenue, I say this all the time, okay? Some of you are going to start gambling when you get old enough. I'm telling you straight up, that's the worst habit you can start. It is. It's literally like doing drugs, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not glamorizing gambling at all. So let's be honest. The reason they pay millions of dollars in taxes to Hammond every year is because people are losing millions of dollars on that boat. But let's, I mean, it's in our city. It's legal in Indiana. We get this revenue, what are we gonna do with it? We do a lot with it, actually. We do parks, we do streets, we pay down debt. But part of the thing we decided to do with it was this new program, College Bound. What is it? It's a program that, that rewards home ownership. It's not even about where you go to school. You know, when it first came out, College Bound was supposed, you know, it started off sort of like the Kalamazoo Promise. Kalamazoo Promise says you have to go to public school in Kalamazoo. Which means, 
If we were going to replicate that process in Hammond, it would have been you have to go to School City Hammond, which I'm sure School City Hammond would have been really happy. That's awesome. But it would have penalized you, admission goal students. You wouldn't have been able to participate because you didn't go to Hammond Public School. Okay? What that would have done to Bishop Knoll, it would have sucked a lot of the students out of Bishop Knoll because some people in here may have said, you know what, love Bishop Knoll, it's a great school, but I got an opportunity to get $40,000 if I go to Hammond Public School. So maybe you don't pay the tuition and maybe you go to Hammond Public School had we instituted something like that, right? It would have worked like that across the board. You know, maybe some people would have said, eh, let me ask you a question. Why would we start a program like this? I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I know there's somebody in here that's not shy. Why? What's so important about this program to the city of Hammond? Why would we spend $3 million a year on a program like this? Yes, Sal. Congratulations, by the way, Sal. Scholarship to Purdue Cal, which is where I went to school. Congratulations. Texas. Have fun. Better weather, for sure, right? 
If you get a full ride anywhere, it's outside. The thing about college bound, the limitations that you're gonna have upon you is you gotta go to school in Indiana. Public or private? You can go to Notre Dame, IU, Purdue Cal, anywhere in Indiana. Up to 10,300? Up to $10,200 a year right now. It's pegged to IU Bloomington's tuition. IU Bloomington raises their tuition, college bound tuition automatically raises. All right? In return for this, every summer you gotta give us 40 hours of community service. Types of things you do. I would work at the golf course. That's what I would do. There's great jobs. Think about what you wanna do with your summer internship. Some people like to work in my office, which I think is great. It's a good opportunity to meet people and maybe catch a job when you're graduated. Some people go to the marina and work out there. Some people want to work in the parks. Some people like working with kids. The city of Hammond does a lot of things. Some people in here know that they're going to be a police officer, so why not do your community service at the police station and get to know Chief Miller? Well, he's getting ready to retire. Get to know the new assistant chief that's taking over as chief. There's opportunities for you to tailor your internship exactly what you want. By the way, I think it looks good on a resume if you said, I worked in the mayor's office for four years out of the college. Say that. All right? Uh, we meet people through these internships. We hire people through these internships. It's actually really, one of the neat things that we never really thought about with the College Bound Program was the opportunity it gives to you to introduce yourself to decision makers, not just the mayor and the staff, to people like bankers and lawyers, people who are gonna be hiring. So, um, what am I missing so far? The requirements for summer? Why don't you say that, Leah? I'm trying to laugh. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the requirements for the program is that you have to graduate with at least a 3.0 GPA, which I'm sure the majority of you have absolutely no problem with. Um, and if not a 3.0 GPA, then a 2.5 with certain SAT or ACT requirements. So that's SAT or ACT requirements would be at least 1,000 math and verbal on the SAT, a total score of 1,400, or if you take the ACT, at least a 21. So that, those components combined with your parents owning a home in Hammond or Robbinsdale, you'd be eligible to receive the full amount of the scholarship. Thanks, Dan. Home ownership, let's talk about it. I get this a lot. Mayor McDermott, I don't think it's fair that this program only applies to homeowners. I get that. I try to explain that what's my job as mayor. My job is mayor. I look at my job as I'm CEO of him. All right, and I and I'm a, I like to I like stocks. You know, I, I look at the stock market multiple times every day. I've always been interested in it. I think it's very fascinating for you, those of you like a man here that, that, that are good with numbers. Maybe it's something to look into, but I digress. Um, CEOs of company have to worry about the stock price and the number of shares and keeping their shareholders happy. Who are my shareholders in Hammond? It's you guys, the homeowners. You know, if your home is struggling in value, if things like crime are out of control and it's hurting your value, um, these are things that the mayor has to be concerned with. I need to take care and try to promote home ownership and try to increase the value of your homes. That's a program we use to do that. Make sure home more valuable. For those that don't own a home in Hammond, you have opportunity to rectify that. Let's say you're in Bishop Hall right now, you're in 10th grade, you've been a Hammond resident your whole life, but your parents have rented which is, I mean, totally happened, right? You can literally fix that situation before you get out of high school. Let's say you have a conversation with mom and dad saying, mom and dad or mom or dad, I really think we should try to buy a home in Hammond. Because if we buy a home in Hammond, I'm gonna, we'll be able to make a case to the college bound that being a lifelong resident, purchasing a home in Hammond shows that you've met the requirements that you gotta be in Hammond for a certain period of time. There's homes in Hammond that literally sell for $60,000, $70,000. And your value of your scholarship is $40,000. It's like an investment to you. And it helps our community. <coughs> Am I missing something, Tom? Um, what about the uh, renewing each year? Oh, yes, thank you. A lot of people get awarded in the first year and say, I got my four-year scholarship. This is great. It's not the way it works. This is four scholarships. You have to renew for each year. When you get your letter, when you graduate from Bishop Hall, and you met all the requirements of the ACT or the SAT and the GPA, and you apply, and you get that happy letter back from the city of Hammond that says, congratulations, you were chosen as a college bound scholar. That's outstanding. Let me tell you something. IU, which is where I have two kids in school right now, 
It's a lot different than Bishop Knoll. Bishop Knoll is tough. When you, get to, when you get to college, you're going to find that things are moving fast, faster than you're used to. And it's going to be harder than you're used to. Subjects that may not interest you, right? And you're going to find it if you're not ready, and you're not ready to give up and, and do the study that it takes, you're going to struggle. And the thing is, we have certain expectations. If you're getting this scholarship, you have to meet. And we're going to pull your grades after each year in college, and we're going to check it. Leanne, what's your GPA? You have to maintain it with your 2.0 GPA. 2.0? Come on, this is Bishop Moe we're talking about. There's people that graduate from Bishop Moe that failed to hit that number in college. For sure. Why? Not only is the subject matter harder and faster, we have classes that have way more students than we have in this auditorium right now. It's also, you got the added pressure of, if you're going to IU, hey, it's a basketball game tonight, right? Wait a second, it's Wednesday night. Who cares? It's a basketball game. I got a test tomorrow. Who cares? How you playing, right? So it's a lot different going to college. Mom and dad aren't going to be there to make sure you're doing your studies. And we're going to find some people aren't going to hit their marks. And if you don't hit your marks, how many people lose their scholarship every year, Tom? Tom's on the exceptions committee as well. About 20%. 20%. You're going to lose their scholarship after their first year. And if you lose it after the first year, uh, it's great that you'll get it back. Some people do get that contract, but if you lose it, let's be honest. The way you got to look at this, it's a four-year scholarship, too. It's a, a period of four years. So let's say you, you hit it the first year. Some people are like, eh, you know, I'm really stressed out. That freshman year was tough. I'm going to go to, you know, get a job this year. Then I'm going to come back the year after that. I'm going to start college again. You just lost another year. And in the third year, if you're still deficient from the first year, you're not going to get it that year. That means even under the best scenario, you'll get one more year. The best way to go to college is to do it right after high school, go four years, carry a full load, get out of there in four years. This scholarship is set up just for that scenario. If you decide when you get into college, I like IU Bloomington. This place is great. I'm going to go here for five years instead of four years. That's your decision. But you're paying for the fifth year. It's a fun place. Not that fun. Not $40,000 fun. Or maybe it is. So I guess what I'm doing is I want to make you guys aware of the program, and you're already aware. I want to explain to you what we've seen after doing this program for eight years. We've seen great things and great people graduate. People like Le Le Leanne that graduated and snagged a job at the city of Hammond. Or people, you know, we have one guy, Ivan Vargas. He went here, didn't he? Ivan Vargas. You guys remember Ivan? Kid's amazing. Went to Bishop Knoll. He was one of our early students, so like eight years ago, graduated, graduated from Knoll. This kid went to uh, Notre Dame and for his community service decided to work with the city. He's like, I don't want to do these can ones like working in mayor's office. Could I run a soccer tournament in Hammond? We're like, well, how, much, how many hours will that take? I mean, you have to do 40. He's like, 40? It's going to probably take me like 120. So he puts together a soccer program, starts off 30, 40 teams, three on three, no. Is it three hundred? How many teams were in it last year? Tom Hennessy? No, I don't know. I know that it was a qualifier for a national tournament. And this young man, who lives in Michigan now, to this day, he's not a college job student anymore, still comes back to Hammond every year and runs this program. Bishop Knoll to Notre Dame, went to University of Michigan, the kid's a genius, by the way. Obviously, Bishop Knoll, Notre Dame, University of Michigan. Still comes back to Hammond, even though he lives in Michigan, runs our soccer tournament every year. That's that's the, kind of, that's the kind of thing we're trying to go for. Some of you may be the mayor of the city. Some of you may be congressmen. I mean, we try to, you know, Hammond's taking care of you by putting you through college. So we hope that you come back. There's no requirement. You don't have to move back. Some people don't. My neighbors, great kids, uh, went to Mary Catholic. They're both graduated. Well, one of them graduated from Rose Holman, got a job at the railroad. She's going out to CSX. The, the, the dream of a lifetime for you. This kid grew up wanting to work on the railroad. And he is. College ought to make that available to him. And it's sad that we're losing somebody like him, you know, but that's a great opportunity for him. But there's a lot of people that are coming back and making a difference right here, too. So I'm going to take questions now before you guys go back to class. It's up to you. <laughs> Usually that gets a couple of hands in the air. Yeah. Okay, after their senior year of high school, they don't notice anything, right? It's not right? required that you do your community service right after high school. After you've been accepted to the program, you can contact me and let 
you know, if you'd like to do some hours in advance, and then those hours will carry over. So that way, by the time you reach your senior year of college, instead of graduating from college and then coming back, if you have an internship you have to take, or if you have an extra class, perhaps, that you have to do, um, you can get all that community service out of the way, so that way you don't have that, you know, last summer that you have to do your service. Okay. Um, and it varies, so it depends on what school you go to. So if you go to Ivy Tech or Purdue Cal, your hours might not be all the way to those 40 hours. It's on a scale. If you're going to Notre Dame or if you're going to um, Bloomington, uh, you know, places like that, Purdue, West Lafayette, you're going to have 40 hours. Let me explain that, Leon. I didn't get into that. That's a great question you brought up. There's different level of tuition, all right? Uh, Salvage of those are Purdue Cal. I hate to keep embarrassing Sal, but I know him, so I'm going to embarrass him. Um, Sal's going to Purdue Cal. I don't know what the terms are. Let's just say he's going to Purdue Cal and he didn't have a scholarship, and the tuition at Purdue Cal is $6,500 a year. I'm, I think it's right around there. I don't know exactly, okay? Um, and let's say another student, this young man right here, is going to Notre Dame. Tuition at Notre Dame is $45,000 a year. Both of them are using the college bound scholarship. So how does it work? So the young man going to Notre Dame, I hope you're going to Notre Dame. Think, think about it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> let's just say. All right, for, for purposes of the example. Okay, he goes out to Notre Dame, tuition is $45,000. How much college bound does he get? He taps out, maximum amount, $10,200. He owes us 40 hours of community service, okay? And then good luck with your $35,000 you gotta find, all right? But it's worth it, okay? Sal's going to Notre Dame, all right, excuse me, Sal's going to Purdue Cal, tuition is $6,500 there. Does Sal get to take the other $3,500, some of his pocket? No, sorry Sal, all right? It would be nice, but what happens here is Sal taps out at the maximum tuition. His tuition is totally paid for. He won't owe us 40 hours. He'll owe us like 30? 32. 32, something like that. So Sal won't have to do as much community service, but it makes sense because Sal didn't use as much as the dude that was going to Notre Dame. All right? Yeah. All right. Do you have the payment scholarship like right out of high school or you take the semester off? No, no. This is a good point. Okay. The only ones that can take time off and not... The word they use in law is tolling, okay? You have certain things that toll a lawsuit for statute of limitations, okay? Like if you're in the military, right? If you're in the military, let's say I get in a car crash, and then I go into the Navy, and I'm on a submarine, but I'm all wrecked up from the car crash, right? And then I come back, and I want to file a lawsuit, but the statute of limitations expired, right? In the law, they toll that period, because they're not going to penalize you for being in the Navy. Why am I saying this? I don't know, it's sort of a weird example, but I think what I'm saying is, if you go off in the service, we're not gonna count your four years against you. Let's say you did two years in the Army right after high school. Are we gonna come, is that Army soldier gonna come back and say, too bad for you, you only have two years of scholarship left? No. We told if you go off in the military. Some people get out of high school and say, this is all tough, I'm going to Europe, and I'm gonna like ride my bike, right, for a semester, okay? Hey man, it must be nice, right? When you come back, you're losing time, right? Even though riding your bike in Europe is great, you're losing money back home, all right? So, moral of the story, join the Navy. <laughs> Don't join the Navy until you graduate college. Take it from an enlisted guy. Four years after high school. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. Good question. I'm glad you asked that. But that's what we were talking about earlier. It's like, some people want to find themselves, you're going to find yourself $10,000 shorter. You know, I think that's the year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? You can go, yeah. What if you go to college for two years, then I think you're two years through, you want to go to the military. Do I take that off your account as well? Let me talk, okay. I'm going to say military guy and answer first. And then I'm going to tell you how it's going to that, okay? Military guy would say don't do that. Because when you're enlisted in the military, like I was, <coughs> guess what enlisted guys do when they get in the military? When they first get in the military? Somebody's got to clean the toilets. Somebody's got to do the dishes, right? Submarines and ships make a lot of mess. You think a captain's going to clean that stuff up? Heck no. So my advice would be, if you've gone through two years of school and you want to go into the military, finish your two years and go in as an officer, okay? Because officers don't clean toilets. Moral to the story, okay? Now, a college guy I was talking to says, um, you would lose two years of your scholarship. You went two years of school, and then if you left, your clock is still running on college time. Oh, actually, no, you know what? You would toll it because you're in the military. But that would be a bad course to take, in my opinion. 
All right, I would, if I was your counselor, I would say, eh, once you finish college, then go to the military. By the way, I'm not trying to discourage the military service at all. I'm, one of the best things I did, I did six years in the United States Navy. Not easy. And, but it was great for me. I needed it. I was not as disciplined as you guys are when I was in high school. So I needed something like that. Questions? Yeah. So if you go to a university that's outside of Indiana, Indiana or? Now, outside of Indiana. You can go to Evansville to school and get covered by college drivers. So you can go, but you can't go to Chicago. Okay? You gotta be in Indiana to take advantage of the scholarship. That was a deal we struck with the governor. The first, when they first saw this scholarship, they didn't like it. They being the people who run the state of Indiana. They thought it was illegal, what we were doing. Uh, and then once they rationalized it by saying, as long as the money stays in Indiana, we can stomach it. And so we put that requirement down. All right? Calum Du Promise, I talked about earlier, only works on public university. That's another weakness of their program, which means in Indiana, you couldn't go to Valpo under this program, but you can go to Purdue Cal. And our program's better. You can go to public or private. All right? We got students at almost every college in Indiana. Do we have students at every college now? Yeah, pretty much. Um, one thing, though, is if, let's say, somebody in here gets a, a chance to go to University of Chicago or Northwestern, okay, the top rated schools um, nationwide. Um, if you go there, make sure you still apply for college bound when you graduate. You won't receive college bound while you're at the University of Chicago. But we've had students before who have been accepted there and then transferred back to an Indiana school. As long as you apply, um, when you graduate, you're still eligible for the number of remaining years on your education for college bound to be transferred back to a school in Indiana. So we had a student, in fact, from Bishopville a few years ago that went to Northwestern for two years, then transferred to IU Bloomington, and they were able to get the last two years. Okay, good point. Questions? Yeah. <coughs> Um, the end? July 2nd, 2014. After you graduate. Yeah, so you can do one of two things. I have some applications, um, or you can put them out online at collegebound.mojammon.com. Um, you could turn in the application to me, and then wait, tell your guidance counselor to send the final transcript to me, and then that way I have all of the information. Or if you want to just hold on to your entire packet and wait until you get that, tr that final transcript and turn it all in at once, that's fine. Um, you know, whichever one works for you, sometimes people feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that they have everything before they turn it in, sometimes out of sight, out of mind. It's all up to you, but July 2nd is the deadline. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. So the college bound um, covers all the colleges across the nation? No, just in the end. That doesn't count. All right. If they have if they have an event that benefits the larger community, it possibly would. Thanks, Tom. And uh, and one of the good things we did about this program uh, was we put a board in charge of it, so I don't have to make these tough decisions like this. Because the mayor would be like, "Hey, you know, we're cleaning out the basement in St. Joseph's soup kitchen. Can I get that for community service hours?" I'm a softie. I'd be like, "Yeah, that's great, right?" But I have this board, and then Tom's a member of the board, and it's good though. Because there's certain situations that arise, and I'll get to you in a sec, okay? There's certain situations that arise that aren't, just, you know, the norm, all right? Let's say, for instance, somebody in this room lives with grandma and grandpa. And grandma and grandpa own a house in Hammond, and mom lives in Chicago, and maybe, I don't know, they have dad someplace else, right? If there's somebody in this room, maybe this applies to you, and you're like, okay, well, mom lives in Chicago, dad lives in Illinois also, but grandma and grandpa own a house in Hammond, and I go to school at Bishop Knoll, but I get the scholarship. These are tough situations that we could not anticipate when we put this program together. 
One of the smart things we did was put something together we called the Exceptions Committee. And it's a board of seven members, community leaders, like Mr. Daverton, that think about this and it's totally anonymous. My daughter could put something in and they would have no clue it's her. And that's the way we set it up. We did it, it said, student A lives with grandma and grandpa, grandma and grandpa own a home in Hammond, student A goes to Bishop Dole, student A's parents live in Illinois. Student A is requesting financial aid through the College Prep Scholarship. And they have to vote on it. How many of these do you get a year? Oh, about uh, 75, 75 exceptions a year. 75 exceptions a year. Because you can't anticipate all the you know, possible scenarios that arise. We do our best. Some scholarships are set up, like the Lilly Scholarship. You know, if somebody in Bishop Hill gets that, oh my gosh, that's a cause for celebration. It's wonderful. Anybody get it this year? Do you know yet? Or? Huh? Okay. And it's an amazing opportunity. And you can literally, it's a full ride. You know, I mean, that's a great, but there's literally only a few students in the state that will get that scholarship. College rounds the other way around. If you're a homeowner in Hammond, you know, a child of a homeowner in Hammond, we want you to get this scholarship. We're looking for ways to help you get the scholarship. But you got responsibilities too, you know? You got responsibilities to graduate with a certain SAT, GPA, and to maintain a certain GPA when you're out in college, and to communicate regularly with us. We had one student last year miss community service by one hour, right? Lost a scholarship. One hour, $10,000, times, that's a big time hour to miss. What are you gonna do? We have rules. It's a super important scholarship. I had a, a student one year, he got a story, he had an attitude with me. Bam! I'm like, yeah. I got a job, what the heck am I supposed to do? I'm like, really? I go, it's a good job? It's a great job. How much you make? 18 bucks an hour. I'm like, dang. I think he makes more than me, right? I'm like, I said, do me a favor. And at the time it was like $9,000 scholarship. I said, take 9,000 divided by 40. It was like $200 an hour. So that's how much you get paid for college jobs. I don't care how important your summer job is. College jobs are way more important. For that student who missed it by one hour, oh man, I cannot imagine when that student went home to tell mom and dad. So they, you have responsibilities too. You know, it's a ten thousand dollar a year scholarship. So, yeah. But sorry about that. Uh, I went off on a tangent again. If you work at like uh, the Reno Village Port Authority or you work at Gulf Port, mm -hmm. can you just work for three hours? Yeah, we do that sometimes. Uh, you know, yeah, that's a good good question. So let's say you work at the Las Marsh, and you say to the boss out there, "This week's on me." You know, and then your boss would sign off that you did your forty hours. We have students do that, right? Yeah, sorry. My daughter did it last summer. She worked at the uh, for Public Works, and she stayed one extra week and just gave that week back to her. You just have to let me know when that week is going to be, so that way I know that you're not actually getting paid for that week because you can't be doing both at the same time. Um, and a good thing to mention is that all community service has to be completed by August 29th of this year. Um, it wouldn't count for anyone in this room right now unless you want to do it early, but it does have to be done. <coughs> But if you graduated from Bishop Bowl this year, once you sign up for the program, you don't owe us anything this summer, during summer. You could. We have some people constantly. We have people, I have a college grad student in my office right now. She's working, I bet, towards the summer hours for next year. Great. Good for her. <coughs> Question. Yeah. Uh, do you have to go to a school in here? No. No. You can go to, we have students in Whiting, um, Mary Catholic, Mount Carmel, <coughs> Munster. Um, yeah, we have students all over. Good question. That's how, if we would have gone to Kalamazoo, the way they did it, we would have asked. So we decided to make our product. Okay? So when you can think about it, I think Kalamazoo Promises, uh, the Kalamazoo Promise was geared towards home ownership and Kalamazoo Public Schools. Ours is more geared towards home ownership. So if you own the home, we're looking to get you into the program. There's a question over here. Yeah. Good question. Sign up for first year, okay? Good question. So, so let's say you get a full ride the first year. Now I'm going to help you here. Lawyer talk coming up, okay? You got, you got. Let's say somebody's giving you like five grand, all right? And they're like, I want you to use it to help you pay for school next year, right? So you got five grand from them, and then let's say you paid your tuition with that, and then you went to the college fund and said, okay, college bound, how much are you going to give me? We're saying, well, how much is your tuition? 
you go to 3,000 say. Uh, 6,500, but I paid 5,000 already. I said, okay, here's 1,500 bucks. Now what you should have done in this case is get the commitment for the five grand, get college bound to pay your tuition, $6,500, and then use that five grand on housing or books or something like that, because you cannot use our money for housing, books, and stuff like that. This is really important. If you're gonna write down one thing that I say today, this is the one. You can only use this money for tuition. That's it. So if your scholarship pays tuition, you save us money. We appreciate it. I don't think you wanted to save us money though. You want to hit us for the tuition, use your other scholarship for the other expenses. College is expensive. So you're gonna have room and board, books, oh man. And then you got tuition, and then you got pizza money. Stuff like that, guys. Right? Macaroni cheese, yogurt, you know. I know you guys eat stuff. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta make sure. Can your community service be done like now? You graduated this year, you wanna knock off your first year? Yeah, absolutely. Just work with Leanne and make sure you're documenting it properly, right? It can be done after you've been admitted into the program. So okay. anything okay. you do before you're admitted into the program, I can't count, but thank you for your service to the community. <laughs> you got community service you gotta do for Noel too, and you're more than welcome to help out the city of Hammond, but you can't overlap that. So no one makes you do community service. It's a great school. It's awesome that they have that stuff. But you can't say, okay, no, uh, I'm working at an animal shelter this week. They sign off and they say, hey, man, we're determined. I worked at the animal shelter this week. Okay? Completely separate. Community service is good. If you coach a baseball team or something like that, I'm open minded because we'd have to document the heck out of it. If you coach little kids, I love that kind of stuff. You can get creative on any good. It's got to help the community. All right? I know some people in here coach kids. I'm open-minded. You can document how much it works. That's good stuff. It's a good role model. Have an official role student, college student, teach a bunch of hammock kids. That's good stuff. That's worth community service in my book. Any other questions? Yeah? Good question. Man, that's a really good question. Yeah? Seriously. I'm impressed. College bound has two years left on the promise. It'll be there, I promise. Okay? Don't worry about that. Just worry about making sure you hit your marks. And then we'll hit our marks too. Okay? So when you hear people talk about that, don't get too hung up on it, I promise you. This is like, as mayor, this is the one thing I've been really, you know, you know, credited with. I'm not gonna let it disappear after 10 years. We have a way that we can continue to fund it. We're gonna, we're gonna push it through, okay? Good question, really good question. Any others? Thank you, Bishop Noel. Always a great session. I appreciate it. Have a nice day.